So here she is on the bench. Uh, we had a quick look at it in situ, and there's these TIP 3055 uh, transistors, which regulate the plus and minus 24 volts. So at the owner's location, um, we determined that one of these TIP 3055 transistors had gone short uh, across its terminals. And so here you can see the faulty one is the one with the little icon on the top and they're connected to the grey and green wires. So the mains comes in here through a step down transformer, through the bridge rectifiers and out comes plus and minus 24 volts. And then we have the regulation circuit where the plus and minus 24 volts come into here and the outputs are plus 12 volts and minus 9 volts. So I think the best course of options is to disconnect the main section and bring the plus and minus 24 in here. Then I can run it off the bench power supply and we can monitor the current, set current limits and hopefully see what else is going wrong. Okay, there's a, a screw there, let's uh... Okay, that's got to be one of the most easiest entries into the Sintite scene. Um, so there's uh, three boards here, we'll find out what they are as we go through. This is where the tip 3055s connect. So... I think we're going to take off this board and just have a look behind there. mark that so I don't make any silly mistakes and I'll compare that to the photos that we took as well so down in there we have you can see the main power supply filter caps and I believe the transformer is down there as well I think we'll just quickly take that off comes out as a whole there you can see the replace tips okay now now I need to try and find out where those plus or minus 24 come off this bridge rectifier this is having a little look on the back of this board the uh, not sure where the plus and minus 24 volts come into but this section up here is the regulation section there's the LM741s and a bit disappointingly there's a lot of flux on here from when this was made they never really cleaned they're soldering up afterwards, which um, I don't think can be a very good thing. To get to that power supply section, I'm going to have to lift it on its side. And we have one more screw there. There we can see the bottom of the matrix. <coughs> That's the back where we came in from earlier. 
and then here we have the mains input transformer there's the bridge rectifier and some smoothing caps oh there's also a voltage input selector that's really nice I must make sure not to touch that okay so now we need to try and find out where the plus or minus 24 volts come off this little fella Hang on. okay so just to be on the safe side I'm going to discharge these caps let's see okay This is the wire, oh, it's the three, the earth, the plus and minus 24. And that wire here comes directly here. So I think the best route for me is to unsolder these wires and then that can come out and I can connect my bench power supply to then drive the rest of the synth. Um, yeah, and that's all we need. That's for the speaker. Yeah, there's nothing actually connected to the rest of this. This is totally separate, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, disconnect that. Um. And that can even come out that side so I can put the bottom back on. check um, can I actually get that in so we know that pin 1 should be going to this diode up here and that's on the positive rail so we'll take the positive rail we're on continuity pin 1 comes up to there and then goes to the anode of that diode so that's correct and we have the negative voltage rail which should be pin 2 which comes up and you can see that goes to pin 4 of that IC So that comes up here. And then we can also check the ground. Where is there a ground? So ground is pin four. Um, and so here's the naught volts. That goes to pin four and this other one's here. Great. So when we turn it on, um, that when we turned it on before, with the new tips replaced, this area was getting quite warm. So this maybe something is pulling too much current. I pulled the connector off of those transistors. What I'm going to do is just label the pins on this. I'm just going to quickly measure it with my peak atlas component. So red is base. Green is collector, blue is emitter. And we'll do the same for the other side. Red collector, green base, blue emitter.
So what you're going to look for first to identify these transistors, which is which. So on this one, the collector goes to the plus 24 volt rail. And on the lower one, the collector is actually uh, on the output. So it should be straightforward to find continuity between the positive rail and that collector. So I'll just pin my multimeter probe on there and see if we have connection to the positive. No, it's not that one. It's that one. So that's the positive row. This is the transistor which is getting really hot. Um, I think I'll quickly just check these op amps. The LM741s. Does that show up on the screen? Eleven seven four one. It's focus. Eleven seven four one. So these op amps seem okay. As that's getting really hot, um, I'm going to whip that out. If this transistor is connected to that transistor, then I'm going to whip that one out as well, in fact. Yeah, there's two transistors on each voltage rail. Okay, that one sounds looks good. Okay, that, that's only measuring it as then a diode. So that transistor is faulty. But the other one is okay. So yeah, this one here is connected directly. So that's the one that's just gone faulty. And that measures okay. So that's the output. So hopefully it's just this transistor. I might as well um, just take this one out as well and we'll measure that on the meter. And before we move on, we're just going to take the one that doesn't work and we'll just mark it. Yeah, so that measures exactly what we would expect. So, 
this is faulty as well by the miracle of TV and eBay we have a replacement one of those uh, BFY 51s um, I suppose because they've come from eBay we should just do a little check they do look like they've never been used before So I've just cleaned around this area here. You can see how much better that looks already. <coughs> um, if this was mine, I think I might be inclined to stick it in. Um, yeah, I was going to say in the ultrasonics, but I'm not sure what these component, how these components would react. Um, if I had a ton of flux cleaner, I'd go over the whole board, but. Um, that might have to be a job for another time. Right, let's check those voltage rails. I'm going to bring the power, my bench power supply in here. This goes off onto the synth. And I want to monitor those two output voltage rails. So I can just get my earths off there. There the earths. And <clears throat> the positive voltage rail, which is pin four. And quite handily, pin four actually comes up to this jumper. So we can we can hook that on there. And the negative nine volts is coming off that collector there. set to power on for the first time so this is the other end which we shall put on this power supply if you switch it off then you can turn it on I've set 400 milliamps current limit on each side okay here we go okay sure it's pulling more than that increase it a little bit okay that's settled down at 500 I'm gonna increase the this is the minus well is what we're having problem with Close inspection of this board look. That looks like it's had it's blown up. Not quite sure what that is. I'm just gonna have a look. So there you can clearly see that has blown up. And the owner did actually say that he smelt something, the magic smoke coming out. So this is obviously where this is shorted out and pulling. Um, a lot of current. So let's just try and turn it on now without this component in place. Let's try that again. Now, if I turn on my power supply, you can see this is where my current limits were stopped. So that's almost three amps. It's way too much. I'm going to just dial them back now. Um, let's say 500 milliamps. I'll 
do. Okay. 225 milliamps on the positive rail, 229 milliamps. I don't know if you heard that, I heard a click of the speaker. We have the plus 12 volts rail and we have the minus 9 volt rail. So that's got the power supply fixed. Anything happening on the front panel? Oh, we have a light. Let's see if any of it works. Um, we heard the speaker come on, so it looks like the output circuit's working. Let's connect an oscillator one to the output. So some bits are working, let's uh, track down and see what the other IC does. So it turns out that IC is part of the reverb mixer circuit. It's uh, this one here, you can see its footprint there. These are quite hard to get hold of, it's sort of like um, does the, it's part of the audio mixing circuit. There is a mod board that you can buy which replaces it with another 741 but also has a couple of uh, germanium transistors. Um, after all the prices done, the actual um, original IC is actually just a couple of quid more. So we'll have to see what the owner wants to do. But apart from that, everything else is working okay. Uh, just no reverb.